Hello everyone, my name is Maria Eduarda Vieira and today I'm present the work Reduced Intraspecific Competition in the Solitary for Giant Dimaconera Quadrifus. Intraspecific competition has ecological and evolutionary implications on the distribution and interaction among co-specifics. In ants, colonies compete for resources and this frequently results in the establishment of stable territories and aggressive interactions. Territorial ants defend a spatial domain that is not limited to the nest entrance or to food resources. And it is found that territories tend to be larger as more popular the colonies are, both due to the increase in the nutritional need and because the presence of more worker to defend the territory. Most research has up to now investigated competition in more conspicuous recruiting and species where the recruitment of nesting mates leads to massive conflicts. Dinoponera quadriceps, on the other hand, is a solitary foraging, a generalist predator, and lives in a locally dense population. In a neotropical environment with intense competition where this species lives, it is believed that only with complex recruitment strategies can competitiveness be achieved. So here, we investigate through behavior observation under natural conditions, where interspecific competition in Aponera quadriceps intensifies with colony size and specific environmental factors. So this study was conducted in a secondary atelier forest at Floresta Nacional de Nível Floresta, state of Rio Grande do Norte, northeastern Brazil. Our sample included 10 Dinoponera quadriceps neighboring colony that were observed over eight consecutive months from July 2019 to February 2020. To verify the size of foraging areas, we followed one ant at a time from departure to return to the nest. We quantifying these three behaviors through all occurring sampling methods, the aggressive interactions, food collecting and chemical marking. As we follow the ants, we mark the pets with number of flags at five minutes intervals and whenever they exhibit one of those behaviors. And after the forage returns to the nest, we quantify the distance and angle between flags using a compass and measuring tape. Therefore, to represent a foraging area used by the colony, the most distance point reaches in each worker's path were connected to form a convex hull. This polygon provides a total foraging area in square meters of all colonies, as well as these overlaps. We use this information to reconstitute the colony's activity, as well as the relationship each colony has to its neighbors. To test if the frequency of conflicts will vary due to environmental conditions, we record temperature, our relative humidity, light intensity, and rainfall, as well we quantify the number of free items captured by focal colonies. Uh, we also quantify the availability of potential prey through pitfall systems. Uh, in our results, we have this first graph that shows the polygons that represented the colonies' foraging areas. The surface of this foraging area was on average 319 square meters, with overlaps ranging to 0.1% to 69.2%. Although colonies vary in size, the foraging area were similar between all colonies. This foraging area weren't exclusively exploited, but shared by neighboring colonies that performed the activity in the same location. The interaction among neighboring colony specifics were characterized by one-on-one -on -one ritualized conflicts uh, or conflict avoidance, such as escape. This kind of interaction occurred more frequently in overlapping areas between neighboring colonies. We found that the antenna boxing, where the aggressor repeatedly hits the opponent's head with his antennae was the most frequently behavior. Other frequent behavior were escape and persecution that indicate conflict avoidance rather than aggression. In addition, we observed no workers' death or injury during or shortly after these agonistic interactions. As food resources were small, using the size of the ant jaw, dispersed and unpredictable, 
colonies could monopolize and compete directly for these resources. While we observed the seasonal variation in environmental factors, they did not uh, change the conflict frequency. This suggests that environmental factors did not directly increase or decrease the propensity of the individuals to become involved in conflicts. So we showed that the Noponera quality ships use the foraging area, not territories, as these regions are not used exclusively by one single colony, are independent or receive territorial marking from foragers. Other ranked species such as Catagrippus fortis also foraging on randomly distributed dead atops, which are difficult to monopolize, making it virtually impossible to defend through territories. Thus, we conclude that an active defense of a fixed territory by the Noponera quadriceps will be costly and will bring small and uncertain benefits since its environment contains small and disperses food resources, as well as high density of conspecific colonies. Foraging area size for the Noponera quadriceps tends to remain the same regardless of the number of ants residing in their nests. In these cases, the nest is found in a viable location, a foraging area is established on its surroundings and accompanies the group for the, head, the rest of its life circle. We also found a great overlap among foraging areas used by neighboring colonies. Uh, we found the decrease in aggressiveness among neighboring colonies of Inoponera quadriceps that may have been achieved by several non-exclusive phenomena such as habituation, a simple form of learning, kinship, since the new nest formations occurs through the fission of pre-existing nests, and the absence of mean positive benefits of fighting. Our evidence suggests that interference competition was not determinant for the local population of the Noponero quadriceps, as conflicts were rare and stereotyped. So I appreciate your attention. You can contact me via email. I would like to thank to the laboratories and funding agencies that supported this study.